What's going on YouTube? Welcome to DNC Gaming Legion. My name is Chris, and in today's video, we're talking about five changes that Dragon Ball Fighters needs. So Dragon Ball Fighters has been out for over a year now, and it's one of my favorite fighting games of all time. But, like with any game, it has its own fair share of flaws, and it has room for improvement, which is why in this video I'm listing five things that need to change. These are in no particular order, so please stick around for the entire video, because I guarantee that there's going to be at least one thing you agree with that's on this list. Without further ado, let's begin. Starting off this list, let's talk about character skins. So, with the release of Season 2's DLC, they added Videl as a DLC character, and she's the first character in this game to receive an alternate outfit. Now, that's really awesome, but every character in this game should have alternate skins or outfits. Pretty much every single character in this game has worn a variety of different outfits throughout the anime. And because of that, there's so many outfits that the developers could easily put into this game for the characters. For example, for Goku, you can give him his Yard Rat outfit that he wore. You could also perhaps give him a Battle Damage outfit when he fought Frieza. For Vegeta, you can give him, say, the Tank Top outfit that he wears in the Majin Buu arc. For Frieza himself, you can give him maybe a Mecha Frieza outfit when he first makes his return. For Piccolo, you can give him the outfit where he keeps his turban and cape on. For Android 21, you could give her her good and evil outfits, which are already in the game, mind you. And if they really wanted to go the extra mile, they could give Goku and Vegeta a Super Saiyan 4 outfit, and maybe change the animation for some of their moves. Like, wouldn't it be cool, for example, if they made it where Super Saiyan 4 Goku's Kamehameha's are red, and when he fires them, he says times 10? Now those are just a few examples, and I could ramble on for hours talking about all the different outfits they could be adding to this game, but I think you get the idea. We all have our favorite outfits for our favorite characters, and if they could just add, you know, most, if not all the outfits from the anime into the game, I think that would leave a lot of fans satisfied. Next on our list of changes is No More RNG Item Shop. Now when it comes to unlocking, you know, lobby avatars, character colors, titles, Z-stamps, all that cool stuff, you know, if, if you want to get that, you have to get it through this stupid RNG item shop. Now look, this isn't the worst RNG item shop I've ever seen, and to be fair, maybe if one premium Z-coin would get you one item, so if you had like 100, you'd get 100 items, maybe I wouldn't be complaining then, but at the end of the day, Having an actual store where you actually can pick and choose on what items you want to buy would overall be better. Because at the end of the day, no one likes RNG and no one likes grinding. So, as long as all the items in the shop are priced like fairly so it's not a grind to get them, that'd be fine. Also, going back to my first point where I mentioned how every character should have multiple outfits, they could put all the outfits in the item shop and just simply have you buy them for Zenny. That'd be great for everybody. Now, next on our list of changes, we have more dramatic finishers and easier dramatic finishers. So, dramatic finishers are one of the most badass things that are in this game, but there's two problems. The first problem is that dramatic finishers are actually really hard to pull off because there's so many conditions that need to be met in order for you to successfully pull off one. The other problem is not enough characters have them. There's only a few characters in the actual game that have them, so because of these two things, you rarely will ever see dramatic finishers in an online match, which is a damn shame. So what needs to change? Well, it's quite simple. Every character in the game should have at least one dramatic finish, if not more. Now, this is where they could get creative, because there's quite a few what-if dramatic finishes that I think they could add to the game. Because, in my opinion, I think Bardock's dramatic finish against Frieza is the best one in the game because of the fact that it's a what-if scenario. So, they can give a bunch of different what-if scenarios for a bunch of different characters. So, for example, what if they had, say... Um, a dramatic finish for base form Vegeta, where he defeats Goku in the Beam Clash. Wouldn't that be awesome? There's also still a couple of other dramatic finishes that actually did happen in the show that they actually could still include here. Like, what if they have one for Frieza where he blows up the planet, just like he did in Resurrection F? I think that'd be awesome. Another one they could also do is Vegeta's final explosion against Majibu. I mean, who wouldn't want to see that, am I right? Now, going back to what I said before about how dramatic finishers are really hard to pull off, I think the biggest problem why they're so hard to pull off is because of the fact that there's specific maps you have to be on 
to be able to pull these off. So it doesn't even matter if you have the right character, you have to be on the right map, and I think that's the biggest problem. So if they made it where any dramatic finisher could be performed on any map, and on top of that they gave a lot more characters dramatic finishers, then you'd probably get to see dramatic finishers a lot more often in online fights, and it would be very exciting to pull these off, which would make winning a match that much more satisfying. Number 4 on our list of changes is the online lobbies. They need to get rid of them and replace them with menus. Now look, these online lobbies, they have a certain charm to them, running around, seeing other players' avatars, but at the end of the day, it's simply inconvenient, because every time you log into the game, you have to then join a lobby, go through a loading screen, and then when you get in the lobby, then you can access all the stuff in the game. But after you play a match with somebody, or sometimes when you're just in the lobby, you might get disconnected, then you gotta go back to the main menu, join a new lobby, go through another loading screen, and it's just simply, it's a pain in the ass, it's unnecessary. Because, like, if you look at a game like Mortal Kombat X or Injustice, these games just have simple menus for their online lobbies. And it's just, it's much more simpler. You just simply click on the menu, click on what you want to play or do, and there you go. Done. Simple, convenient, much faster. It's just, it's overall a better system. Also, these online lobbies cause even more problems when it comes to setting up a ring party match. Now, in my opinion, a ring party match is the most fun game mode this game has to offer. But setting it up is a pain in the ass. Because there's no matchmaking for this game mode. Or, at least, if there is, it doesn't appear to work. I mean, there's this little area right here in the online lobby, but every time I access this little area and try searching for a, a match, it doesn't ever seem to find a ring party match, unfortunately. And because of that, your only option to now find a match is, well... You have to simply find a lobby where someone's hosting a ring party match, or you gotta create one yourself and have wait for people to join your lobby. But the problem is you don't know what lobbies uh, are gonna have people hosting ring party matches. Now yes, I am aware that there is a lobby titled Ring Match Priority, but half the time I go in this lobby, most of the people there are simply hosting regular ring matches, which is completely different from ring party matches. So, overall, finding people to play with is a pain in the ass when it comes to ring party matches. And even when you do finally get the thing to set up, well, half the time, if at least one person in the uh, party match has a bad connection, it'll probably cause a lot of lag, or it'll cause the entire party to get disconnected from the match, which sucks. Because, unfortunately, it seems like this game's servers cannot handle having six people in one match. So, to recap, Get rid of the online lobbies, replace them with menus, have simple matchmaking for everything including ring party matches, and fix your damn servers. And finally, the last change that I feel like Dragon Ball Fighters needs is better tutorials and more transparency. So what do I mean by this? Well, let me explain. So all fighting games have a learning curve, and that's fine. I don't expect to get good at the game overnight. But, I do feel like this game doesn't do a very good job of preparing you for online matches, particularly when it comes to things like handling corner pressure, getting out of the corner, and just defense in general. Because, in my opinion, defense is way more important than offense is. Because if you can block any attack that your opponent throws at you and then punish them when possible, you could probably defeat an opponent that has higher damaging combos than you if your defense is better. Because if you fail to block properly and you get hit just one time in this game, you're gonna get comboed and you're gonna take a lot of damage. Which is why you need to be very good at blocking all types of attacks that your opponent throws at you. And this is even more true when you're in the corner. Because when you're put in the corner, there's multiple ways for your opponent to approach you. And for each approach, there's an action that you can take to counter them. But if you don't know how to counter them, you're gonna get comboed, you're gonna take a lot of damage, and you're never gonna get out of the corner. It's kind of like a math problem. Every problem has a solution, a formula, to solve the problem. But if you don't know what that formula is, then you simply cannot solve the problem. And trying to learn what you're supposed to do to get out of the corner in the middle of a match is, well, really hard if you don't even know what your first mistake is. Which is precisely why this game needs blocking challenges. So, you know how this game has combo challenges where they have you perform a specific combo? Well, they need to have blocking challenges where they have you block a specific combo. 
they should have one for every single character. Essentially, the way it should work is they should put you in a corner, have a character perform a variety of combos on you, specifically ones that are very viable and commonly used among players, and the game should then show you and teach you what exactly you need to do to successfully block the entire combo and get out of the corner. So take for example what you see happening on screen right now. Goku does this combo and then BAM! He hits me with this command grab that was unblockable. Now what the hell was I supposed to do to avoid that? I don't know. But if they had a blocking challenge where they had Goku perform that exact combo on me, the game could then show me what I need to do to get out of it and how to avoid it. And then I could practice it offline and then I'd be ready for an actual online fight. Now moving on to what I said before about transparency, this game needs to provide more information when it comes to, like, special attacks. Take for example, Golden Freeze's transformation. There is no description as to what the hell this move does. Now considering this move costs 3 bars of key and is something that you're not gonna be able to use left and right, wouldn't it make sense for the game to tell me exactly what this transformation does so that way I know what to use it for and when I should use it? I mean, if you look at a game like Mortal Kombat, and you go to the move list, all the data you need to know about the move is all listed there. They have the frame data, what type of move it is, whether it's a low move, a mid move, a high move. Pretty much everything you need to know about the move is all there, which helps you figure out what to do with the move. But here, there's just simply absolutely nothing. I mean, take another, another example is, look at this Broly move where he makes this little force field. What exactly does this do? Does it give me armor? Does it let me take a free hit? Does it work on melee attacks? Does it only work on key blasts? Like, so on and so forth. Like, what does this move do? Many moves in the game also have a light version, a medium version, and a heavy version. But again, the game doesn't really tell you what the difference is. Like, take for example Broly's air grab. He's got a light version and a medium version, but what's the difference? When should I use the light one? When should I use the medium one? Like, so on. Like, information like that is kind of important. There's also some mechanics that this game does not even tell you about. For example, if you use Sparking Blast and then you perform a Vanish, if you hold the Vanish button down, instead of hitting your opponent, you'll cancel the hit and you'll be able to perform a regular combo. Now, something like that seems like it'd be very important, so why the hell doesn't the game teach you this? I mean, this could make the difference between winning or losing a fight. Another mechanic the game doesn't tell you about is you can actually tag in a teammate to do an ultimate attack. The game tells you, I believe, that you can tag in a teammate for a regular super, but not an ultimate. And again, something like that could come in handy for, you know, winning a fight. What I'm trying to say here is that knowledge is power, and in a fighting game, you should be told everything you need to know about the character and moves, so that way you know how to properly utilize them. And with all that said, those are five changes that I feel like Dragon Ball Fighters needs. But what are your thoughts? What changes would you like to see the Dragon Ball Fighters? Do you agree or disagree? Leave your comments down below. And if you liked anything about this video, please hit the like button down below. Maybe share the video as well. Maybe hit the subscribe button too while you're at it. Hit the bell icon for notifications. And until next time, this is Chris from DNC Gaming Legion signing off.